think one of the reasons that the Bible has endured is that it's about us, and it's about us every week, wherever you open up the book. Because I've definitely been on the side of those people who are working all day and sitting there and working and working and working, and then whoever comes in at the last minute gets the same reward as me. And I've been on the other side, too. I had the pleasure of working at a software company once, and I was hired in April. The company was bought out in November, and I, in fact, got a bigger bonus than a lot of people doing my job had been there many years other than me. I got the same amount as other people. And it's not something I deserved, um, but it was basically, I, there was a particular reason for that that I won't get into, but it was not a deserved thing. It was something that I received, and I felt a little weird about it, seeing these people who had worked there for five years that didn't get as much as me, and also seeing a lot of people who got basically nothing. It was weird. It, it went against my feelings of fairness. And I think that is the same for all of us who come into these situations, either the, those who are on the people who have been laboring for many years side or on the other side. We don't understand why this has happened. And when we're talking about monetary compensation, it's a little bit different than when we're talking about God's love for us. But it's still there. It's still that same visceral feeling, right, of watching someone else who has not worked as hard as you get the same reward as you, even when that reward is what you were expecting. Right? And we see this a lot in politics, and we see this a lot elsewhere. But one of the strange places we see it is in church and in other organizations where we may have joined for a long time, we may have been slaving in, uh, in isolation, we may be working alone, we may not have been getting very much attention, and then something happens and draws a lot of attention to the movement, and suddenly all these people showed up and want a part of that, and it's na natural to say, no, you don't know what you're doing, no, stop, we tried that already, no, no, we, ah, no, stop, 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 you don't know what you're doing, what are you doing here, I've been here for 10 years. And sometimes people are generous when that happens. Sometimes they say, oh, I'm very happy that finally all these people are paying attention. But there's, at a certain level, a nervousness that suddenly they're going to take over the attention. And we see this in a lot of things. Um, you know, we saw this in gun control circles. Everyone was really happy that attention was brought um, to the movement and that people came in. But there was a lot of fear uh, when high profile things happen that, I'm sorry, that was a bad example. Um, they were not happy. Um, I apologize. Uh, sometimes that happens up here. What happens sometimes is attention comes to a big movement that's been going on for a long time, and a lot of people come in and change the movement, and there's a lot of fear. And so we, like the people in the story, get nervous when it's us that have been invested in that. And one of the things that we see sometimes is an urge to talk about deserves a lot, an urge to say, where do you stand and where do you get off in telling us what we're going to do in the future? And so God is saying here, Jesus is saying here, look, people, in the kingdom of God, God doesn't matter. God loves you all. It does not matter what you've done in the past. It does not matter if you just showed up five minutes ago to come and work to build the kingdom of God. God, this is my kingdom we are building, and I will open the doors to anyone who comes whenever they do come. And so this is a hard thing for us to remember, and it's a hard thing for us to get over sometimes, that bad things happen, that we may uh, find ourselves on the sidelines as we watch people slaving away in isolation, people going away in the darkness, and then a big thing happens. We say, but we don't know how to do anything. We don't know how to help. We don't know how to come and make changes. All these people have been working on food security issues for so many years. I have been on the sideline. It's too late for me to do anything. People have been working to bring peacemaking, to do uh, peacemaking in war-torn towns. How can I do anything? How can I uh, join at this late date? People know so much more than I do. People say, but I have done so many bad things. How is it anyone will listen to me when that happens? And one of the things, uh, one of the places I've seen this 
is these past few weeks. Because those of you who follow the NFL at all, or even those of you who read a newspaper or look on the TV understand that we've had a lot of attention paid to domestic violence in the NFL in the past two weeks. We had the Ray Rice situation. Ray Rice, a running back for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, violently assaulted his then girlfriend, now wife, was suspended for two games, and then the video of this happening came out and the NFL and the Baltimore Ravens um, decided they could not take uh, the bad publicity anymore and stepped up and suspended him for longer and released him. And Adrian Peterson, who was the running back for the Minnesota Vikings, was arrested after Child Protective Services was called on him um, for injuries he did to his child while disciplining the child. And you look at that, and our nature is uh, to judge these people, and our nature is to be horrified by this. Our nature is to say, how could they do that? And that's a good nature to have. But it's also important to understand that they did not come out of nowhere. That these people, uh, Adrian Peterson's reaction was, I am not a child abuser. He said that because in his mind what he was doing was what people do. And in fact, if you look at the percentage of people who approve of spanking in this world, in this country, 70%. Now we may say, oh, but that, above 70%. Oh, but spanking is not what Adrian Peterson was doing. Spanking does not lead to injury. Well, then we're getting to the definition of what spanking is, and that's all defined on your norms. And if you believe of yourself, I am not a child abuser, as Adrian Peterson does, then you're saying at the end of that, well, of course, nothing I do could be child abuse. And so when someone comes to you and says you are a child abuser, that is a hard thing to react to. No, I'm a good person. No, this is the way I was raised. No, this is the way it was when I was growing up. And you're also afraid of what happens if you admit, no, this actually was abuse. You're afraid of making yourself into the thing that you fear. And so we have to look around and see, is there an example of what it looks like to say, I don't want to be like that anymore. And one of the interesting things this past week was that when we looked around the league for who was interviewed for opinions on this topic, One of the people was a Bears wide receiver named Brandon Marshall. It was interesting because Brandon Marshall has been arrested many times for domestic violence. Brandon Marshall was so unreliable that teams stopped wanting to have him on their team despite the fact that he was an excellent receiver. But what happened with Brandon Marshall is that a couple of years ago, in the wake of a particularly violent incident where he wound up being injured by his wife and then basically said, yeah, if, just so you know, if we tell this story, she's not the bad guy here. Brandon Marshall checked himself into McLean Hospital in Belmont, Massachusetts and said, I don't want to be like this anymore. What's going on? How can I change this? McLean Hospital, for those of you who may know, is one of the most famous psychiatric hospitals in this country. And Brandon Marshall was in McLean Hospital, and the psychiatrist looked at him, and they studied him, and they talked to him and said, Brandon, we think you have this thing called borderline personality disorder. And they started describing the symptoms of it to him and sort of what, what it is and what it's like. And Brandon Marshall said, it was like a light bulb went off. He said, now I know why I do these things that I do. And it does not excuse that behavior. 
but it explains that behavior. And now they understand why I do the things that I do. I can change my life so that I don't do that anymore. This is not saying, oh, I swear I will never do that again. That is very different. Just saying, I swear I'll never do that again, is part of the cycle of abuse. But Brandon Marshall said, now that I understand there are concrete things that I can do to change the way that I interact with the world. And that's what he did. And so the past two years, he has been promoting awareness of mental health issues in the NFL. He's been saying, it's really embarrassing to admit that you have a problem. It's really embarrassing to say, especially in the NFL, look, I have mental illness. But people need to be able to say that so they can get beyond where they are and get the help they need to improve their lives. So he understood that when people come at you straight on, you build up a defensive shell. Or maybe you just access the shell you've been building up for years. No, I am a good person. No, this is not something I could do because I'm a good person. Maybe that shell was built up before you even had a memory of building it. He said, if you take it sideways and say, no, there are things that I do that I do not like, that he could find out why it is and move to change things. And what Jesus is saying here is that in our lives it's never too late. That God will welcome us all into the kingdom of heaven together. It doesn't matter if we've been slaving away in isolation for our entire lives or if we show up with a year left and say, God, I want to help bring about the kingdom of heaven. We are all welcome there. Redemption is at hand for all of us. The resurrection is for all of us. It does not matter if you have been standing on the sidelines. It does not matter. What matters is getting in the game. What matters is finding a way to change, to bring about the kingdom of God, and to open yourself up to the possibility of transformation in the Holy Spirit. Just ask Brandon Marshall.